Hi all you wonderful quilters, it's Kathy with True Cotton Company in Carmel, Indiana. Look in the description box down below if you want the location of the store or a link to the website. We'll sh link all the products in the description box that we show today as well. I'm really excited to show you. We're going to make some flannel scarves because it's a nice cool rainy day here today. <laughs> and so. If you're in the northern hemisphere and in a place where it gets cold, now's a good time to make a scarf because we're getting into the cold months in January and February. Now, if you watched last week's video, you saw the Heartbeat quilt, and I got it quilted. I don't have the binding on it yet, but I worked with some free motion quilting and then did some ruler work on the borders, and I just think it's a really fun mm -hmm. Quilt, and so I'm really happy with how that's turned out and so hopefully tomorrow I can work on the binding and then we can get this hung up in the store. So I'm really excited about that. Today we're going to make a scarf which I have here in the process and so we'll do these nice frayed edges. I love these woven flannels from Robert Kaufman. You can see the front and the back since it's woven are the same so you don't really have to worry about your right and wrong side there is a little difference in the texture but they're both wonderful and soft on both sides and so I really love working with these now and I also like printed flannels but all the ones we have are woven and so you get the same design on the inside and the outside and so we have some really nice ones this is mm -hmm. an organic flannel and this is a brick called red really pretty red and black. We've got this cider in the mammoth flannel giving you some nice berries, greens, yellow, getting into some purples, really pretty. This is the Americana, yeah, the red, white, and blue, so really fun, nice patriotic. Into this fun one, this is Adventure. This is the one I made myself a scarf out of because I did make scarves for all the employees we have four so I made <laughs> scarves for all of us for our holiday gift this year and so that was a fun one this is strawberry I'm pretty sure yeah plaid strawberry this is a really fun one mm -hmm. this is a nice soft elegant one this is in summer junior it's the color. Now we get into if you like blacks and grays with a little pop of red. This is smoke. Hmm. And then we have these fun more southwestern designs. This is blue tile. Uh, oh goodness, my brain. Tios. My brain's not working. T A O S. That should be an easy word. <laughs> but my brain has frozen. This is rust. And these are just so really soft. I wish you all get a chance to feel them. Just show you here too how you get that design on the inside just opposite of the outside. Mm. So it's really fun and you could make some pretty pajamas, scarves, bags dresses so much fun stuff i love working with these now the pattern for the scarf is i found it on youtube <coughs> ehow ehow showed you i'll link them down below and they have also their website they give you all the measurements and stuff i will tell you them though because i'm working a little different they liked a 22 and a half scarf and when I tried that on that was just too big. I didn't like that much scarf so then I went with a 11 and a quarter and then I decided that you might as well do a 12 instead of 11 and a quarter. So I'm going to cut out a 12 inch because that's what I've been working with. Because I think that makes for a much mm. better just size to work with. And what I've done is as I line these up, I just try and match up the colors. So we're about, it doesn't need to be perfect because this is just a 
little scarf, but when we cut the 12 inches, it will just be a little straighter that if I trim off this edge, because you're working, this is the two yards, that's one thing I should tell you all, it's two yards of fabric that you need, but you make a few scarves. You want to cut the two yard width. So not from salvage to salvage, but the length, because we want a nice long scarf. Hmm. And so I'm just my, doing this a half inch away from the yellow line on this plaid. And that way we're straight the whole pretty straight the whole way. Like I said, you don't need to be perfect. This ties around somebody's neck. This isn't what they're going to be usually showing off to everybody that how perfectly straight everything is. And I do use my left hand for this. If you don't hmm. like using your left hand, just do it in your right hand and then flip everything around. That's just the way I practice so I don't have to do all the flipping and so now this is a 12 inch ruler and so I'm gonna want to line that up and then what I'm gonna do with this long edge is just use it right along that place and that way I know I'm lined up and then I'll be using my left hand again because that's just the way I cut even though I'm right-handed and so I do like right-handed cutting but I find if you just take your time that left hand works and then I just move this up till this last part on the cutting mat and we want this to be 12 inches again and you could do it the 11 and a quarter like they say there may be a reason why scarves are a specific size mm. but I just don't know that rule so <laughs> I just think an easy use the 12 inches oh, I got off a little there don't do that when you cut. This will be when we use it. Now I want to show you, here's the part that took me a little bit to figure out. Cutting out wasn't too bad. But fraying the edges. And some of you probably are going to know this really well, but it's just taking a thread, and it's a slow process, but you just take threads and you're going pretty much one thread at a time and you just pull a thread and you just hmm, grab your next thread and you keep grabbing the threads and like depending on the color, like right now I'm pulling these blue threads. So I like working in a red. Let's me see that I'm picking a blue, but you get in there and you just keep pulling those out. And I think we've got one more blue thread and then we're gonna switch to, I think red. And so you get in there and that you want to do this for about two inches and you'll decide where that is because I just kind of use my finger and like I think I would go to this pink here I would fray all the way out to that but it's just taking your seam ripper finding that next thread pulling it out and it'll come right out and I know you can use this to find the straighter grain as well 
but it's just do that and you do this it does take a while I would find a nice audio book a podcast put on some of your favorite music or you can do it while watching a movie that you don't need to pay too much attention to that way you can be <laughs> looking at your project and this doesn't take I mean it takes a while but it's not a hard thing to do you'll just build up a pile of beautiful threads and it's actually I find it pretty fun to do if you just have, take your time and have fun but you'll do that to both edges just like that that was the part on the video they kind of skimmed past and that's why I wanted to make a video to show you is how that frayed edge works <coughs> And so I've done that on this one. You can see here I've got this fringe just about two inches. And now it may be harder to see here. I've done a zigzag stitch right along the edge. This is something that they don't tell you in the video, but that, I know you use a zigzag to stop fraying. And so I just right along that edge do a little zigzag stitch. And then to finish it off, all you have to do is do a little hemming to this. And you're just going to bring, fold it over, and then fold it over, and just iron it down. And you can put pins or clips in. If you had a rolled hem foot, this is a good time to use that. Mm. And you're just going to want to bring this around and iron it. Like I said, any pins or clips. We're just, you know, trying to hide this edge that can fray over here that way. We do that. And you're just going to keep going down here doing this. And then it's just a little top stitch to get it done. So you come over to your machine. And like I said, if you have that rolled hem foot, but here we'll just do our little straight edge. Also a compensating foot. I know I just picked up for this. This would be a good time to use that as well. Hmm. But we're just trying to hide those edges, and you're just going to do a little top stitching. This machine doesn't do a zigzag stitch, that's why. This is just for straight stitching. That's why. I, at home, I did the zigzag stitch. Do a little back stitching there, and just come along. Hmm. And you'd typically have this whole thing ironed, so you didn't have to adjust. But you could just be here and just adjust. like I'm stepping on the scarf down there. That's what was pulling on that a little. But just stitch and I just go right along that edge. It's going to be hard to tell because it's a white thread on this mm. light fabric. But it's just like this. And then it's really, you're talking just a couple hour project and you get this nice scarf that you can wear. And I'm not the expert. There's lots of videos on YouTube to show you how to wear scarves. I'll typically just fold it in half, wrap it around, pull it through, mm -hmm. and just wear it like that. For me, that's easy to get on and off and that's really my goal. Because <laughs> I like the scarf when I'm cold and then once I'm inside, I like to take it off. So I like that. Well, that's a really quick look at making a scarf. I'll certainly link you to the eHow video that I used. Just a quick two-minute video that shows you as well how to make a scarf. So now you have two videos to watch to see how to make the scarf. Hope you enjoyed the Quilting on the Heartbeat quilt. And I hope if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and like. And if you're enjoying our content, subscribe to the, our YouTube channel. And we'll see you back next week. If you're sewing, do win that game of Bob and Chicken. Mm -hmm. And certainly have a good day. Bye.